I'd like to welcome you to the Biesi America location here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Pete Hauser. We went ahead and we are doing a complete list as far as what materials you need to properly set your tools. We we're also going to go ahead and find exactly how you take those measurements, how you upload those into the software on both the CAM software and the CNC itself. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to start making a footprint. With that footprint, it's going to show us how we have to adjust those tools up or down. And we're also going to go ahead and show you how to put those polishers in properly without overpressure. Once we get those footprints created, we're going to go ahead and show you exactly those quality edges. So how you can maintain those edges as well. Then we're gonna take some time and actually do an evaluation of a time study, how you can do a time study so you can figure out exactly how much that machine can produce for you. So. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and scan the top right now. So what that's gonna do is we went ahead and put a tracer in the machine. We're gonna scan the, the top so we can place it anywhere on the machine. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna scan that piece so that way a DXF drawing can automatically be uploaded into the software so that way we can program the exact location of it. Typically what we would do is we'd write a program and have a location for that program and then we just run it and identify where the pin stops are or with the laser projector, where that piece goes and then we'd run that program. Now that that's all scanned, now I can go ahead and bring and import that drawing. So you can see exactly those points that it scanned off of the piece. What I'll do is I'll put a box around this and we're going to go ahead and run a profile on it. And this is that piece. It's sitting at a little bit of an angle, so not a problem. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create what I consider a footprint. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to run a line from here to here. We're going to offset that. So as we're going to go ahead for the saw, we'll have two millimeter over material. And I want my copy on so I have my before and after. So typically what I like to do is show that piece. This here, I'll change the color. So. This would be the over material and the white line will be my final dimension. So we're gonna do multiple steps. So there's a couple different ways we could do this. We can see exactly what our length is on this. So we're at, let's say 500. So we're at 500 and we are sitting with seven profile tools plus a power edge. So that brings us to eight. So we wanna divide this into nine sections so we can see how much over material the saw is leaving how much the power edge, position one, two, three, four, all the way down. This is just kind of a helping key. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and hide this other drawing. And I'm gonna do from this point to here. So that's one tool, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. These were just as a reference and get rid of those. So now I'm gonna go ahead and apply those sequences. So we'll go ahead and insert machine sequence. So each sequence we have our power edge. We have our position one, position two, three, four, and five. Getting to the final dimension. What this is going to allow us to see is a transition line for every tool as it goes down. So that way we can make sure that it's touching both top and bottom for the T profile as it moves from position one all the way down to position seven. It's also gonna show us our step and it's gonna show that we're removing all the lines of the tool ahead. So this will give us that full map for how the tools are working and how we can make sure that we maintain them for the future. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start placing the tools in the machine. But first I wanted to go ahead and go over kind of the uh, maintenance set before they go in the machine on how I wanna coat them. So realistically, all we really wanna do is we want just a light greasing. So I'm literally spraying it on and wiping stuff off. I'm gonna get a residue actually built up on this, but you'll feel with your finger that you have a small amount of a lubrication and that's all we really want. If you go ahead and you look at putting heavy grease on top of here or a, uh, a spray adhesive, when that tool is sitting in 
the tool holder, the tool rack, it's going to have dust and we have an environment that's extremely dirty. The more dust that sits here, so if you have heavy grease sitting here and you have dirt and grime, it's going to collect all that dust, all that granite, all that diamond, and then it's going to put it straight up into your spindle. That's what's going to cause your tool collet to wear out faster, and it's actually going to go ahead and cause these retention, retention knobs to go ahead and fail better, fail faster. So what we want to do is keep a very, very clean environment so that way when we're putting it back in there and it's just going to be a light greasing and typically what you do throughout on a maintenance side was you could spray your cloth and just go back through and wipe these clean on a daily basis or weekly basis. So right now what we have to do is we're going to put each tool back into the machine. So disabling the guard. place one at a time. I'm going to go over, I'm going to go to manually tell it exactly what tool is in. So this tool is 101. Hit OK. Hit the start button. We'll see that data come straight up here. It's going to show the diameter and the tool height. Now I want to go ahead and put that tool away so I can do an automatic tool change with nothing registered here. And that'll go ahead and put that tool away. And we'll just repeat that whole process one by one until all the tools are put in their proper location. Okay, now looking at the tools that we just placed in the machine, it's going to go ahead and show from position number 7 all the way down to 17. It's going to show it the blind hole drill. Then it's going to have the core bit, finger bit, our Power Edge Super Z, our first position, Diamond T33, our three flex version, position two, three, four, and five diamond, and then position six and seven polisher. So after you look at the tools out there, you're gonna see that position six and seven are fairly close in color. Position seven is gonna have a little bit more of a gray hint to it. So making sure that the label and all the tools are identified clearly as you're going forward on that. So now we're getting ready to where we can run the footprint and verify some of the setup. So we're going to go one tool at a time and do a verification process to make sure that we make any adjustments and then we'll move from there.